One of the great joys of gardening is being able to grow not only what's beautiful, but useful. Hi, I'm Alan Smith. Join me next as we look at what's not only a feast for the eyes, but for the table as well. Hi, I'm Alan Smith. If you're like me, you love to spend time in your garden. In fact, I can get lost in time. But you know, when I'm working in my garden, I don't want to have to deal with pests and problems like that. Oh, of course, it's an inevitable part of having a garden, but there's some clever ways to deal with it. That's why I thought we'd take a trip and visit a woman who takes a creative approach to dealing with pests in her garden by using some of her charming little sidekicks, Thelma and Louise. You see, they help her to eliminate insects, they provide weed control, and fertilizer for her garden. Not only that, she always has a kitchen well stocked with eggs. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? If you're looking for something tasty, we'll visit Earthbound Farms in California, where they're growing some of the freshest and most delicious greens around. And speaking of good things to eat, we'll take a look at one of my favorite vegetables, the artichoke. Did you know the artichoke is just a big flower bud and it's produced on beautiful foliage? Speaking of artichokes, what does an artichoke and Marilyn Monroe have in common? Well, I'll give you the scoop on that a little later. I'll also show you one of my favorite plants for bringing a little sparkle to the shade. It's lamium. These guys can really add a refreshing look to your garden. And if you're tired from working in the garden all day and need a little break, I've got a homemade recipe that'll help boost your energy. It's a fresh fruit ice cream that's guaranteed to cool you off in no time. But first, let's make our way to California, where we'll learn how these guys are growing some salad greens that are out of this world. That's next, so don't go away. We all follow trends to a certain extent. Art, fashion, cars, you name it. And the garden is no exception. Several years ago, if you wanted a head of lettuce and went to the supermarket, what you would find would be iceberg. And then from there, we went to leaf lettuces, such as buttercrunch, bib, and romaine. And then there were the baby greens, mixed in all sorts of varieties. Today, the trend for enjoying the freshest greens possible is being carried a step further with microgreens. Mark Marino, manager of Earthbound Farms in California, tells us more about these tiny but flavorful treats from the garden. Microgreens are a new trend in salad greens at Earthbound Farms. We've been growing microgreens since 1998. And this micro arugula we've just uncovered, we harvest them in the field, and then we take them to a packaging area where they're washed and then packaged in recyclable uh, plastic clamshells. In the microgreen mix, we have, besides the baby arugula, baby spinach, baby purple mustard, anything can really be a micro. With the microgreens, one of the most important aspects, besides their beauty on a plate of all the colors and textures, is the flavor. It's a compact explosion of flavor in your mouth when you taste this product. Trends in our modern, fast-paced lives may come and go, but trends from the garden seem to stick around much longer. If you'd like more information on microgreens, just check out our website. It's no secret that homegrown vegetables are pretty hard to beat, so that's why I try to grow as many as I can. And with that in mind, I always have to be on the lookout for unwanted visitors like pests to my garden. And of course, there are many ways to deal with pests. In fact, a gardener in Carmel, California, follows a time-honored but non-traditional approach, at least by today's standards, with chickens. Let's meet Thelma and Louise. These girls aren't all about glamour, though. They're also extremely hard workers in the garden. These are araconas. Yes. And I guess you know all about araconas. Well, I had them growing up as a kid. Yeah. The, the Easter egg chickens, they call They're them. They're beautiful, and they lay beautiful turquoise eggs. Don't they? So this is Thelma. She's the dark one. And then we've got Louise over here, a little blonde. <laughs> and these girls produce eggs for us about two a day. Do you find that a lot of your friends uh, scratch their head when you tell them that you 
uh, live in this house, yeah. you have this garden, and you raise chickens. Yeah, they think, they think I'm kind of nuts, I think. <laughs> and that's fine. They haven't been in the garden for a couple of days, so they need to do some bug work for me. There you go. Come on, Louise. As we clean out this chicken coop, all of the, uh, the used straw goes right into the compost heap. Sure, and then all their litter, of course, activates that's, the compost. That's a great fertilizer. I think you can go buy chicken fertilizer, and I don't have to do that. Go, do your thing. Yeah, there she go goes. Go for those bugs. <laughs> Well, I like the chicken coop that you've prepared for Thelma and Louise. It's very decorative. Well, and it's handily adjacent to the vegetable garden, which they patrol for me. Of course, during the time that we're planting, they are, they are not allowed in here. They'll eat everything in sight. All the new sprouts as they come up will be gone. Sure. Look, look at her right now. She's yeah. looking for snails. <laughs> My grandchildren come over here and uh, the first thing they'll ask for, I want to go see the chickens. Mm -hmm. And they come out, I, I let them feed them, they like, let them out, chase them around the yard, pick them up, carry them around, it's kind of sweet. Coming up, we'll take a look at one of my favorite veggies, the artichoke, plus discover what Marilyn Monroe and this tasty vegetable have in common. That's next, so don't go away. Welcome back. Did you know that the first artichoke queen was Marilyn Monroe? That's right. She was crowned in 1947 in Castorville, California. Boy, didn't her career take a turn after that. Just goes to show you that first impressions aren't always accurate when it comes to people and plants. If someone told you they had something that they wanted you to eat, and it was green and scaly with little spines on it, and that the best part to eat was its heart, you'd probably be turned off. But actually, that's an artichoke, and this is an artichoke feel. Artichokes happen to be one of the plant world's finest delicacies. Actually, it's the immature flower bud of this plant that's so highly prized. And that shouldn't be any surprise to us, since we eat flowers all the time, in salads and as garnishes. Things like daylilies, pansies, nasturtiums, and even rose petals. The artichoke is actually a big thistle, and you can see the fuzzy flower in the center beginning to emerge. Now this is the part you don't eat, but if you allow this to mature, it's actually the most beautiful part of the flower. It turns purple. Americans have been enjoying artichokes for a long time. In fact, Martha and George Washington grew them in their garden at Mount Vernon, but it's the Italians we have to thank for bringing them to Northern California and establishing them as a commercial crop. Now this part of the country is regarded as the artichoke capital of the world. If you've priced these in the grocery store, you know they can be a little on the expensive side when you compare them to other vegetables. That's because it takes several years for the plant to mature, and even at that, they don't produce many buds. And each individual artichoke has to be hand-picked. But the way I see it, the taste is worth the price. Now if you're having trouble growing artichokes in your garden, don't worry, you're not alone. These little guys are fairly finicky and only like temperate climates. Not too hot, but not too cold either. Personally, I prefer to let my friends at Caramia in Watsonville, California do all the work in the field and to purchase their product from my local grocery store. And if you still want the look of artichokes in your garden, but could live without the frustration of growing them, I would suggest growing cardoons. They're cousins to the artichoke and easier to grow, producing beautiful foliage with a thistle-like bloom. Give them a try, you won't be disappointed. Coming up, we'll take a look at what's new in my garden, so don't go away. Hi, I'm Alan Smith, welcome back. In today's show, we're taking a look at being a backyard farmer. And who wouldn't want to be a backyard farmer when you can produce beautiful produce like this? You know, in my vegetable garden, I love to mix all types of vegetables, herbs, and flowers together. You see, they're all contained in raised beds. I also love to grow salad greens in containers like these, and you can see I have three different types of lettuce going here. This one is a green oak leaf. Isn't it beautiful? I just love its chartreuse color. And this one in the small container is called romaine freckles. And this one in the large pot is called red grand rapids. Now, lettuce is so easy to grow in containers like this. Let me show you how I do it. I start with a shallow container, as you can see here, and I put just a basic potting soil in it. 
Now it's important to keep that soil moist, and I like to start with a moistened seed bed by taking a watering can and just wetting the soil like so. As soon as that settles, we'll sow the seed. And what you want to do is you just want to gently sow the seed like so over the moistened soil and then cover it with just a quarter inch of potting soil. Now these seed will germinate in seven to 14 days and in just 40 days you'll have mature lettuce to enjoy. It's a great way to be a backyard farmer. You should give it a try. Placing these containers in the garden is both a feast for the eyes and for the table. Now on a similar theme, in my garden, I'm always looking for plants that help me solve problems while looking great. Annual plants can be ideal for achieving this, like geraniums. Of course, the natural world can delight all of our senses, but it's our ability to smell so many different incredible fragrances that puts these plants at the top of the list. These are scented geraniums. They're cousins to the more common zonal geranium. You know, the ones with the beautiful rings around their leaves and bright blooms. Just look at these flowers. Now, while the flower of the scented geranium isn't as showy as these zonal geraniums, the aroma of their foliage certainly makes up for any lack of bloom. There are over 50 different species of scented geraniums grown. There's such a range of flavors, like lemon, nutmeg, peppermint, and this one with the dark blotch on the leaf is chocolate. So as you can see, there's a flavor here for everyone. I like to plant them in summer containers with other flowers and keep them near the kitchen so I can make good use of their delicious leaves. Here are a couple of simple ways you might try them. Try adding a teaspoon of fresh chopped leaves into a cup of fruit salad for a little extra zip. And a refreshing tea can be made by simply boiling a quart of water and a fourth a cup of chopped leaves and a half a cup of sugar. Just let the tea simmer for about five minutes. You can serve it hot or pour it over ice on a hot summer day. When you're selecting plants for your garden this season, include some of these scented geraniums. You won't be disappointed. With these striking zones or rings around the leaves, Americana geraniums are free flowering and heat tolerant and have a larger flower head than some of the other zonal geraniums. A mature plant can reach up to 12 to 14 inches, which makes them ideal as a mid-height element in containers. You'll find that most geraniums perform best when they get at least six hours of sunlight. And remember, they're heavy feeders, so feed them frequently during the growing season. I like to use a well-balanced fertilizer. About a 20-10-20 ratio works really well. Another plant that helps me solve problems in the garden is a lamium called Anne Greenaway. Maybe you're not familiar with lamiums. This family of plants makes an excellent and extremely attractive ground cover. And they're usually perennial, but there's some annual varieties out there. Well, I've grown several varieties in my garden. What makes Anne Greenaway so special is its neat green leaves edged in bright gold with a silver center stripe. Like most lamiums, it blooms in the spring, but it's primarily grown for its foliage. Now, plants with a wide range of colors to choose from can also be problem solvers, like impatience. One of my favorites is the New Guinea impatience. They can certainly lighten up a space. One that I've been using in my garden is called Orchid. Just look at these soft lavender blooms. Being a backyard farmer means knowing something about our gardening heritage, such as garden folklore. Some people swear by the farmer's almanac. These old-fashioned guides to gardening are full of information. You know, one of the things I remember my granddad saying with regard to the soil is that the best test is to reach in, get a handful of it, and squeeze it. If it falls apart like this, you're in good shape. If it stays in a clod, well, you need to add a lot more humus to the soil. Also, you never want to work in your garden or walk in it when the soil is wet because you compress and pack the soil. Now, when it comes to planting, one good tip to remember is you want to always rotate your vegetables around. You never want them to be planted in the same place year after year. Mix it up a bit and stay a step ahead of pests and disease. Another idea that's always served me well with my sugar snap peas is to soak the seed in water overnight before sowing them. You'll always get a better rate of germination. 
Now, some may regard the almanac as nostalgia, but I see it as a way to have a positive impact on my garden's future with a little help from the past. Now, let's step out of the garden and into the kitchen for a refreshing fruity ice cream dessert. We'll get started after the break, so don't go away. As the days continue to get warmer, there's no better way to spend your time than by making a homemade ice cream dessert. And since simple is always better to me, this recipe is one of the best. It only takes a few ingredients, and it's certainly easy to put together. And its fresh fruit flavor always puts a smile on everyone's face. This ice cream calls for three fruits, oranges, lemons, and bananas. Now you'll want to use one and a half of each of these. The recipe makes a half a gallon, but if you have a gallon freezer, it can easily be doubled. Start by juicing the oranges and lemons, and then slice the banana in the blender and puree. Then I add the juices, making sure no seeds get into the mixture. With the flavor of the fruits combined, now I'm ready to add the two other ingredients. One cup of sugar, and about a half a can of condensed sweetened milk. And blend it one more time. Now I'll add this to the freezer container. And once I get it in here, I'll add enough milk to bring it up to the line marked here on the edge. I'll put it in the freezer and it'll be ready in no time. Now if you'd like the recipe for this great tasting summer treat, just check out our website. If you've never had the opportunity to grow some of your own vegetables, I strongly encourage that you give it a try. One of the easiest things to grow, of course, is lettuce. It's a great place to start. Now, in today's show, we've covered a lot of ground. If you'd like any of the information, specifically that ice cream recipe, check out my website. That's pallensmith.com. Until we're here together again from the garden, I'm Alan Smith. This garden I dream of a bed of flowers Bluebirds sing of the beauty all around us And every time the sun comes out I can't help but smile oh. But smile 